Hello, everybody. Can everybody see the screen? I can't really see, but yeah, great. Thanks. Um, this is thank. Welcome to the engineering update. Uh, this update will be f actually focused very much on Geo, but uh, I wanted to start with introducing uh, new team members on our engineering team. We've got uh, uh, one platform member, Michael, front end. Uh, well, we have new UX, UX lead, Tim. And when he joined us as part of the core team and on the production team, we hired two, two more people, Ela and Jason, uh, both in uh, Europe and Asia. And on, we have a new UX lead, Sarah Veselov. So really excited to have you guys on board. Um, and now I will launch into a completely different topic because a lot of people have asked me about, well, where is Geo today? And where is it, when is it gonna be ready? And uh, what does it do? So I'll first start with the pop quiz. What is GitLab Geo in the first place? So is it A, GitLab's master plan for world domination? Is it a feature that improves productivity because you can clone from different zones? Does it provide high availability? Well, the short answer is really two through five. Um, you know, we love world domination, but that's not really the goal right here. Um, it's a tool we want to use to be able to migrate from Azure to another cloud if we need to, but we also want to have a live backup um, that we can fail over to in case something happens on our cloud provider. So uh, in this in slide five shows the current uh, diagram for uh, what Geo does today. Uh, if you, we have a primary on the left, uh, that might be like your gitlab.com instance, and then the secondary is on the right, which is basically a clone. Um, and we, we, right now we replicate repositories, LFS objects, and up user uploaded attachments and we do this uh, most of the the, the the bottom two things the lfs and attachments we do it over https um, on the repository side we just copy things over a standard git clone um, the one thing i should point out is one thing we added and i know was this geo tracking database so normally we have on the primary we have our normal postgres database on the secondary we also have a postgres database that is a read only uh, uh, secondary of that database. So every change that happens on that primary gets automatically reflected on that secondary uh, via standard Postgres replication. But we've added a second database that actually tracks on the secondary like what it has and what it doesn't have. Uh, so it, this is how we determine on the secondary that we don't have project X, X, Y, or Z. So next slide, I'll show you exactly how that works. So you know, on the left, the secondary has a list of the projects it should have, and on the right, it has like this project registry that indicates the ones that it actually downloaded. And so if, if it notices that it missed project three and four, it'll go off and try to clone that. And we put a lot of effort into improving that over 9099192. Um, as I said before, you know, we, we, we replicate the, the projects and the project wiki repositories, uh, LFS objects we copy over HTTPS attachments and things like SSH keys we also propagate. Um, in 9.2, nine, nine we've improved the UX a little bit. We, you know, this is the, the, the status screen that you see if you go to a geo admin page. It's not exciting, but it's better than what we had in 9.1 and we're constantly trying to improve this. But the big step forward here is that we actually can start to monitor the progress of our synchronization. Um, I alluded to some of this and I accomplished from 9.0 to 9.2. You know, we added the secondary tracking database. Um, before 9.0, we never uploaded, we never tracked which uploads were actually going to the, into the database. So if you attach something to your issue, that would just get uploaded and you wouldn't, we wouldn't actually know about it, uh, except for if you looked in the file system, we happen to, you happen to upload this PDF or image, whatever you uploaded. So now we actually track that in the database so we can actually figure out what has actually been changed on the primary. Um, I, I mentioned the, the repository backfill sync. So when you bring up a new secondary, it figures out it, A, it doesn't have these projects. It goes off and tries to clone them. It tries to figure out what has what been has updated. Been and then goes and tries to do a git clone or git pull. Uh, we added support for downloading LFS objects, attachments. Uh, we've made it a little bit easier for developers to set up Geo and also made uh, a little bit easier for admins to set up. It's still a bit of a challenge, but we're, again, trying to prove that over time. As I showed you before in the earlier slide, we added a diagnostic screen and API to get the status of the replication from the secondary. And you know, we've had customers try to use Geo and they run into a number of issues and we've been working with them to iron out some of these bugs. And thanks to 
people on the support team, Devet and Gabriel and uh, Douglas for jumping on these customer calls and, and working through them. Um, so I want to kind of talk a little bit about sort of the, uh, the, the model of replication right now, we, uh, you know, there's two ways to look at it. We, you know, do you have a push or a pull model for replication? We actually have both right now. We have uh, on, the, on the push side, we, we have these uh, system hooks. They're really web hooks that when an event happens, we fire and we go off and do something. So for example, when you push a commit on your primary, we fire a system hook and that gets, uh, that gets communicated to the secondary. Secondary says, oh, I, that repository has changed and does a pull. Right, so the good the good thing about that is it, something that happens on the primary gets immediately reflected on the secondary, assuming you have network connectivity. And the bad part about that is that you're not guaranteed that these hooks actually go through, nor are you guaranteed that they arrive in order. Right, so if you consider project deletions and creations, that becomes problematic. If you have something that's supposed to delete a path and then create the same path again, if you get that out of order, things could get messed up. So. Um, and that's one reason why we're going to consider moving away from it. Uh, in the poll model, uh, we have uh, asynchronous workers, sidekick workers that go and just figure, repeatedly run. They, they run every few minutes and decide, has anything changed? And then they go and try to update either the repos or the attachments or whatnot. And the good thing is the regular schedule, they're not dependent on user activity. So if you have an idle instance, it should just pick things up. Again, the downside is that you may not get updates fast enough. You know, you might hit a, you might do a push and you might wait minutes for it to update. And that's not necessarily a good experience for some users. So um, that's kind of how we have both right now, but um, we are going to move away from that. So as I mentioned earlier, this is, this is kind of what happens when you, when you push a commit on the primary on the left, it gets handled by the post receivers handler, fires off a web hook. But again, if, it, if, if th that connection between the primary and secondary is not there, this doesn't work and it will retry over time. But again, that becomes that you get into ordering issues and, and um, item potency issues and things like that. So what are we doing about that? Um, we're talking about uh, creating an event log. So you know um, what happened on the primary and you can kind of replicate it on the secondary. Um, and these are events like you create an SSH key, you, you push and all that. And so we have some system and the second way it figures out, okay, this stuff happened. I need to go and resynchronize like this project or I need to download this file and so forth. So that's the approach we're going to be taking now and hopefully get away from the system hooks. I, you know, this, again, this is a design that we're pushing on for 9.3, um, but I'm open for suggestions. So just to summarize what we're trying to do next for GEO, it's the reason why it's not quite production ready is that we really want to have GEO useful for us internally uh, as a way to move and back up GitLab.com. So for us to do that, again, we got to get away from the web, uh, web hooks and, and move to this whole event log system. Um, one thing that we do on GitLab.com that we don't document really well is that uh, SSH keys are actually managed by the database rather than the single file, this authorized keys file that most users are using today. And that's a problem because it's, we don't have a, sense, a single source of truth for some of our customers because you know, you've got keys in the database and you also got keys in this file that's generated periodically. And, and that, that's challenging for Geo because you really need a, sense, a single source of truth to make this effective because if you need to update this file constantly, then you have to preserve ordering and all that. So we're, um, really going to on Geo trying to focus on documenting support for that and making that easier for customers. And there's a bunch of other tasks. I won't get into them. You can look at the issues and talk and, and look at them in more detail. Um, that's really a summary. Are there any questions? <gasps> Yeah, Jim, you mentioned why uh, spokes. Yeah, that's that's a little bit of solving a different problem, the distributed Git problem. That's something that we that is on our radar, but not for really for Geo right now. Um, and that's replication from like a Git low level abstraction. So something like Gitly, once we have that in place, will allow us to consider how do we do replication at, at that level. <laughs> Uh, what do we think is 939495? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, a lot of this stuff is challenging, so we're still, still trying to figure out the time frame. Uh, 93, I think we're going to push on creating the, the event log and making it uh, making Geo a bit more robust for enterprises, so that you know if 
a customer has an instance in, G in China and one of them in New York, if they're disconnected for a week, we can pick up where we left off. And that's really the goal to make it uh, solid. So I think 93 will make a lot of progress on the event log, probably a lot of, um, a lot of things to work out there. Um, you know, if we can get that in 9394, I think we'll feel really good about getting closer to production readiness. Um, I'm hoping, you know, it's hard to predict a time frame because a lot of the work uh, comes up as you do this because it's not an easy problem because basically we're inventing a replication system for GitLab, an application level replication system. Um, but, you know, I think we'll feel really good about it when we start actually using it for GitLab.com and we start finding issues and, and working them out and working with our customers that actually have production deploys of Geo in DR. Any other questions? Do we think anyone will run up all the repos from one continent? Um, that's a good question, and that's why I have this item of adding support for selectively replicating some groups or projects. Um, you know, we, we've heard from customers that they don't necessarily want to replicate everything, so we do need to have an option to say, look, um, only pull these things down, and I mean, that's an optimization that we can add. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that's a use case, but right now we're focused on just making this work. Does the DR work currently? Like I said, it works at a basic level. Um, the, the challenging thing about DR is um, things get out of sync. Um, you get run into errors and things like that, and you've got to be robust. So at a basic level, you know, we have primary and secondary we've been testing. We have customers um, sort of using it. Um, and for 9.2, it will be a much better place. Um, like I said, it will, it will keep repos up to date, assuming nothing goes wrong. But uh, the challenging part is things do go wrong in practice. And, and Geo is going to have to tolerate these failures and try to recover and, and you know, for example, if a repo gets broken and we can't download it for, you know, 10 times, we should try to just wipe it and try to re-download it again and see if a clean state will bring it back to life. So things like that make uh, Geo a challenging product. Great. If there are no other questions, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, I'm glad this was helpful. I know this was I, I, this was really focused because a lot of people are probably are not aware of what Geo is happen, happening in Geo, and so instead of giving a broader update, I decided to focus on that. So perhaps next time I'll do a broader update. So thanks everyone for joining, and uh, see you uh, next week. Have a great weekend. <gasps>